But of all the strategic bombers, none has come close to the B-52 Stratofortress. Developed to carry nuclear weapons in Cold War deterrence missions, it was the B-52's conventional abilities that saw it become an integral part of the U.S. war machine. Eight turbojet engines power this giant of the skies, which boasts a wingspan of 185 feet and can carry more than 60,000 pounds of armaments. Not to be left behind, the Soviets built the Myasyshev M4 Bison as an answer to the Super Fortress. But the first prototypes of the long-range bomber proved a disappointment. It was unable to fly from the Soviet Union to the United States and back in one hop. A later variation of the Bison gained a longer range with the removal of five original gun barbettes, which lightened its load and it was able to reach American waters. But the bomber was unable to reach key cities on the American continent. The Tupolev Tu-95 Bear was better placed to serve as a strategic bomber. The Bear is the only bomber to use turboprop engines, which give it a range and endurance greater than comparable jets at just slightly slower speeds. The Tu-95 became well known to American fighters as it prowled the edges of NATO airspace on surveillance missions. It was also the aircraft that dropped the Tsar Bomba hydrogen bomb in 1961, the most powerful atomic weapon ever test detonated. The following year, the USSR put the Tu-22 Blinder into service. Its medium bomber variant could reach supersonic speeds and cruise at high subsonic speeds. The Blinder carried up to 9,000 kilograms of bombs, including various free-fall nuclear weapons. I'm Wing Commander Frank, the commanding officer of 83 Squadron and the captain of a Vulcan. The Vulcan is a delightful aeroplane. It combines the greatest ease of handling with a very high performance and extremely high reliability. As one of the select countries to join the nuclear club, the United Kingdom was keen to develop its own strategic nuclear bomber. In 1952, the first Avro Vulcan took to the skies in test flights. The Delta Wing subsonic bomber went into service four years later, carrying Britain's first nuclear bomb, the Blue Danube. Vulcans carried Red Snow, Britain's first thermonuclear weapon, as well as American thermonuclear bombs under NATO agreements. The Vulcan could also be armed with conventional weaponry and played an important role in Britain's conflict with Argentina over the Falkland Islands in 1982. The jets bombed airfields and radar installations, refueling in mid-air using Victor aircraft and setting the record for the world's longest distance raids. Also in the British arsenal was the Handley Page Victor HP-80. Its distinctive crescent wing was designed by German aerodynamicist Dr. Gustav Lachmann and Godfrey Lee of the Handley Page Aviation Company. The Victor was fitted with four Armstrong Sidley Sapphire engines and had a larger bomb bay than its bomber counterparts. In 1956, test pilot Johnny Allen inadvertently broke the sound barrier when he dipped the nose and achieved Mach 1.1. Witnesses heard a sonic boom, and the Victor became the largest aircraft to reach the speed of sound at that time. While the British bombers cruised the world in the hope of averting conflict, the French were fighting a hot war in Indochina. In 
Indochina, the Reds take a hammering. General Dolinars, French theater commander, sees his flyers blast the enemy with napalm bombs. With French and loyal Vietnam forces disorganized after the death of the dynamic General Delatra, the Reds made substantial penetrations into Allied territory. But now counterattacks have pushed the enemy back. French Dakotas, Ju-52s, and B-26s bombed Vietnam's communist forces in the years before America intervened. A decade later, the United States entered the war in Vietnam on the side of the anti-communist South. It was in this conflict that the B-52 came into its own. Although designed primarily as a carrier of nuclear weapons, the Stratofortress performed admirably as a conventional bomber. When the USA escalated its commitment in 1964, 74 B-52F bombers were fitted with external racks that could hold 24 750-pound bombs. The aircraft took part in Operation Rolling Thunder, a systemic bombing campaign targeting North Vietnam's industry and infrastructure. Several B-52D bombers were modified to carry 60,000 pounds of explosives, enabling them to undertake carpet bombing campaigns. Whole villages and large swathes of jungle were laid waste with this tactic, and the weapons used included highly flammable napalm bombs. The next advance on the B-52 was the B-1 Lancer. This strategic bomber had its first flight in 1974, entered service 12 years later, and remains a key component of American military strategy. It's also the last remaining variable sweep wing aircraft in the US military. Known as the Bone, allegedly because a reporter left a hyphen out of the name B-1, the bomber is capable of supersonic flight at altitude, but its primary role is as a subsonic low-level penetrator with stealth features and the capacity to carry nuclear cruise missiles. Its swing-wing design and four General Electric F-101 GE-102 augmented turbofan engines give the aeroplane exceptional range, speed and flexibility. Through the use of radar and inertial navigation equipment, its crews can navigate around the world, update mission profiles and target coordinates in flight. Despite its advanced avionics and futuristic design, the B-1 has faced challenges due to the lack of spare parts and maintenance problems. Nevertheless, 66 remain in active service. The Soviets introduced their own swing-wing bomber in 1972, the Tu-22-26 Backfire. The long-range strategic and maritime strike bomber can fly at supersonic speeds and is still used by Russian forces. Unlike earlier Tupolev bombers, the Backfire carried its landing gear in the wing glove rather than large pods. On its release, the bomber's range gave the Americans cause for concern, as it could penetrate U.S. airspace if it refueled in the air, was launched from nearby territory, or was flying a one-way mission. Backfires were used to drop conventional bombs during the Soviet war on Afghanistan in the early 1980s and were deployed by Russian forces against Chechen fighters in 1995. The most advanced bomber in the United States military is the Northrop Grumman B-2 Spirit, also known fondly as Lamb Chop. Costing close to a billion dollars per aeroplane, the Americans scaled back their commitment when the true cost became known and ordered just 21 of the stealth bombers. But even a small fleet of these unique aircraft brings benefits. The Spirit's stealth ability allows it to penetrate enemy airspace undetected and unload its payload of either conventional or nuclear weapons. And although its expense and abilities dwarf other American bombers, the Spirit carries just two pilots, an aircraft commander and a mission commander. Its systems are highly automated, allowing the pilots rest breaks while flying. The B-2 range is so great that a bomber carrying conventional weapons could cover the world with just one refueling. From grenades dropped by hand over the side of a biplane to the computerized stealth weapons systems launching laser-guided smart bombs, the tactical and strategic bomber has evolved in capabilities undreamt of by the early aviation pioneers. 
Today, unmanned Predator aircraft roam the skies in far-off lands armed with Maverick air-to-ground missiles. From an air-conditioned office halfway around the world, an operator can fly these silent machines to their target, lock on with a laser beam, and release their missiles, destroying that target. Few can guess what the future holds for these machines of war.